Okay guys, so how are you guys getting along? Good. Having fun? Good. The energy in the room is up to the top. So guys, so right now we will be talking about hackathons and beyond. So not only the events themselves, but also like different kinds of stuff. So my name is Alejandro. I'm a software developer at Bloomberg. I am co-founder of a lot of the crazy things here and there like Hacker Global, previously Wake Up Roulette, and a lot of uh, quirky stuff. Hi guys, I'm River, um, founder of Startup Hacks. Been involved in hackathons for four years now, um, working for Alejandro for two. And uh, Accelerators as well. And today, um, we are going to be going back in time to the dark ages, as we mentioned at the beginning of, of the event. So how everything started and how it has progressed in terms of a, a little bit about ourselves and what we're doing. So it all started with the hacker word the concept of I want to start going to technology events and I want to bring everybody to them. You know, there was a few people that just started doing them. You know, Bill all with the crazy massive student hack in Manchester. We were doing all the stuff in the south. Uh, then a lot of people were doing little things here and there, but there was no such thing as you know, like an organization. Uh, after I left uh, university, I was like a bit nostalgic. I was like, I want to continue this, uh, but I can't really take hack assaults with me. So I decided that I actually gonna change it and make it Hacker Global. And then I started just traveling all around. I went to uh, Russia, uh, in Brazil, in Iran, in, in, in Romania, and started kind of like teaching uh, other programmers how to organize hackathons, uh, creating and establishing these communities and relationships uh, that led to what right now we are gonna be doing. I'm gonna pass it over to Rivers so he yeah. quickly brings oh. about himself. So, um, I, I attended one of the first ever startup weekends in the UK back in like 2012. Um, didn't really like it. I thought it was too focused on business, um, not less, less focused on the hacking. So I started something called Startup Hacks, which was um, meant to be a combination of actually um, building tech products and actually uh, make sure you're building cool hacks that can actually be turned into a startup afterwards. Um, you know, and we were Europe's first actual hackathon to have an application process. So you couldn't just buy a ticket and come along. You had to apply, tell us why you wanted to come along, what previous things you've done, um, and what you wanted to achieve. And then we would kind of select the best ones that we, that we thought were most relevant. Um, and one thing that we did was um, we got um, some of um, the UK's best entrepreneurs and um, investment companies to come along and actually mentor for the hackathon. Um, these, this, is, this is two years ago when they still were trying to figure out what a hackathon was and um, when most of them didn't really care. And we managed to convince a lot of them to come along to see the power of hackathons, um, not just in terms of what we're building, but also in terms of the people and what value they can add back into their own organization. Um, and what ended up happening was 40% uh, of our participants got onto Entrepreneur First, which is uh, you know, one of the best accelerator programs in the UK. Um, our other participants have gone on to get onto uh, Techstars, Y Combinator, Seedcamp 500 startups. These are all very, very um, you know, well-known accelerator companies um, around the world. Um, three, three of our startups have been acquired, which is quite a good achievement. Um, and the alumni have raised over 20 million pounds since then. So that's over two years, guys, you know, like uh, roughly around about 140 people have gone on to run companies and, and raise 20 million. Um, so, so we ourselves, you know, we feel like we've proven the model in terms of being able to bring good hackers and good mentors and helping them kind of, you know, build startups afterwards. And what we've seen is that this is all coming to a trend in terms of the hackathons, because right now everybody and anybody can run a hackathon. And that's when uh, me and River just came together. He came up with this idea when we were running the startup bus of why don't we just do it on a train? And that's when the hack train just came up. It actually came up out of, out of a, like a little joke, but then it turned out it exploded when we ran the first hack train, which was basically an event that started in London. It went to Manchester, Sheffield, uh, York, Edinburgh, and then back, back again. Uh, it was basically an event where the attendees were able to uh, understand what the problems of the industry were, and not only build stuff that could solve it, but they were in the train with the people that would be using it, so they were getting instant feedback right the moment they were building it, and they managed to test it. It was, it was a very, very good experience. So, uh, you know, as you can imagine, we managed to get, like, a few good shots of them just, like, li literally, like, trying to engage with the market, trying to come up with the ideas, brain dump in the trains. Um, which was something very, very different uh, and that immersed them in an industry that is otherwise very boring. You know, who here thinks that trains are awesome? 
Okay, Ooh. yes. You're okay. all on the next hack trade. So you guys, you guys are just going to the hack trade. Uh, and yes, and we had the, the finals at the National Railway Museum. So it was just things that really, really immersed the attendees in something that was completely different. Like the, the previous speaker mentioned, it's not only happening in one venue, it's happening in multiple venues, affect, like interacting with more than one community, more than one sponsor group, etc. And something that we are doing right now because of the momentum this has uh, managed to achieve, We've just closed a partnership with the Department for Transport uh, and as well as other associations, train associations. So going from the model that we were imagining of let's just do a hackathon agency, but looking forward, that would have no impact. You know, in three years down the line, we've had hire like 10 more people, but they're probably not good because we're delivering average projects. Yeah. Instead of that, we took on a, more, a much, much bigger project, which is literally replicating what FinTech did in finance and bringing it to the railway industry. So connecting the, this, this hackers with the industry to really create something that will bring an impact. And now yeah. I'm gonna hand it over for River uh -huh. for some of the quirky things that we had on the, <laughs> on the journey. Um, so one of our participants ended up on the front page of the, uh, the London Evening Standard as a result of being part of the event. Um, they were called the, the Don't Get Lost Boys. Um, and um, you know, it was essentially a very, very kind of watered down article about how um, tech is actually helping the railways and how um, you know, Silicon, uh, the Silicon Roundabout that is in London is starting to actually kind of expand beyond um, just normal tech and get into the railway industry. So that was quite, quite a feather in our cap for us. Um, you know, and with all this exposure, you get, a lot, of, um, you get a lot of bad things as well happening. So um, th these guys set up a new Twitter account <laughs> called Hack Train with an <laughs> E at the end. And um, they started using our hashtag and started abusing our sponsors, saying that we were actually um, destroying the train. Um, I mean, you know, we were like, you know, tearing <laughs> it apart, and um, we were actually like, you know, like being bad to it. And uh, this guy was very brave, right? So we we handpicked forty developers across the Europe, right? Most mainly the UK, but we had some from Europe, right? And about five of them were actual hackers, right? And this guy Jamie. essentially started <laughs> tweeting us, saying all of this stuff. So we asked one of the actual Jamie. hackers, Jamie, Jamie. Um, <laughs> to find out who he was, right? And um, we found out what his name was, and we found out what his Twitter handle was. So we sent him a nice little tweet, just saying like, yeah, instead, even, of, instead of yeah. hacking into his accounts and stuff. Yeah, you know, we could have destroyed him on Twitter, but instead <laughs> we were like very nice and diplomatic about it. You know, we just said, good evening, sir. We're very sorry that you think the hack train is nonsense. Um, you know, this event was supported by major rail industry companies um, for the sole purpose of improving the trains. Right? They actually want to make your life better by improving the trains, and they've asked us to come along and help do that. Um, you know, um, thank you very much for your time, and hopefully you, know, like, we, you, know, you don't think it's nonsense. After a good back and forth that lasted for about an hour, um, this is what you ended up tweeting. Yeah, so, and uh, the craziest thing, we just presented to Virgin Trains because this exact same thing, and they were like, wait, we just hired that guy. Oh, we were just like, because no, we discovered that he was like an actual C++ developer, that he was just like a uh -huh. bit... Yeah. Uh, so the, re the, re the reason why he was abusing was us crazy. was Sorry. because uh, Virgin Trains had got rid of a loyalty program, and he like used that loyalty program 24/7. So he just because uh, Virgin was one of our sponsors, he just decided to abuse us and hopefully get them to change their mind. But um, you know, obviously that didn't happen. But we made him support the hack train and get back onto the good side of Virgin, and now he's employed by them, which is really funny. Um, you know, and key thing that we've, what we kind of tried to achieve with the hack train was instead of just running a hackathon on a train, we wanted our participants to actually solve problems for the rail industry. So we actually got our, um, our sponsors, people like Network Rail, National Rail Inquiries, Virgin Trains, East Midland Trains, and the train line to present problems that they were having in the industry. Um, and then we, we you know, you know, encourage our participants to build solutions for them. Um, this one here is just a hyperlapse video showing participants how to get from uh, A to B from a station. That's all it is. Um, the, the ATOC, the sponsor that gave us this challenge, had actually spent 1.2 million trying to build it themselves, and it took them 18 months, and they failed. And they, they admitted that it was essentially a 1.2 million loss. Our team built it in 48 hours, not a prototype, a fully working product in 48 hours, um, and it didn't cost them 1.2 million to build it. So now it's so not taking it forward. Yeah, and now, now they're taking it forward, and now they're like closing contracts with these companies to actually roll it out across the UK network. Um, Right, and from that, um, we discovered that initially we were, yes, we're going to do this. You know, it worked in the railway industry. Let's do it in health and finance and all the other industries at the same time. But then 
we saw that that is not possible. And after a lot of mentorship from people like uh, Matt Clifford from Entrepreneur First and a lot of people, uh, we discovered that focus and sometimes being boring is the only way that you will actually be able to reach far. Um, so right now what we are trying to do is really bring this innovation to the railway industry. And this is not going to happen unless we build a startup ecosystem within. And by that, it means providing a platform that will allow an individual, an innovator, to be able to come in and not only have the data available, but have the means to kind of close the contract with the, with the partners. And with all this that we have just mentioned, uh, the main thing that we want to convey is uh, just four main points. Uh, right now, anybody can run hackathons. So you, it's, not, it's not about what hackathons can you run, but it's about what can you do with them. You, know, it's, you need to understand what is your underlying vision on running these events so that you can have this as a bigger picture instead of just one weekend long event. Because hackathons, they're not anymore just like a 48 hour event. You know, they're not anymore just an event where you bring developers together and they, they go home. They're more of a community building project. They're more of a, of a tool that will allow you to actually change lives. And what we recommend you is to actually be able to uh, pick a theme or an industry or something specific and that you kind of like go towards chasing that instead of just going and doing like a generic common hack and go home. Because that will allow you to not, not sell, but it will allow you to like present your hackathon in a bigger picture, attracting a bigger audience and attracting a larger pool of potential sponsors, etc. Mm. Right. Um, so in terms of what we're doing next, uh, we have Hack Train 2 coming up very, very, very soon. Uh, this time we're going to be launching three trains from, from two different cities. So two trains from London and one train from Glasgow um, going all, all across the UK. Um, if you're interested, more than welcome to apply and kind of attend the event. Um, and then we're also launching the Hack Train Accelerator, which is essentially we're, go we're going to be taking some of the startups built on the Hack Train, giving them funding to continue their idea on a three-month program. And uh, da, da, da. we have three hackathons coming up very, very soon. We have two related to health, um, Amy Hacks, which is happening in Glasgow. So if, you're, if you want to get involved with um, a medical education-related hackathon, more than welcome to come to Amy Hacks. We also have Telhack, which is one um, being sponsored by the NHS. Um, again, if you're interested in health or education, more than welcome to attend. And we have the Hack Train. Um, go on the website. You can apply. And like slide. Questions? Awesome. So thank you. Do you guys have... Any questions about transport-related, industry-related events? We're, 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 we're too intense. <laughs> okay. So, Go for it. Yeah, venue question. Wasn't it slightly uncomfortable to code on a moving vehicle? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome idea. It's yeah. Do it through the physical jiggle of trying mm -hmm. to drive well. I think, I think trains was just beautiful because it was a first-class carriage for the whole event for each of the journeys. Yeah. When we ran this startup bus, never again. It was like 80% of the hackathon on this like, and, and the buses were super cool. The ones that we got, they had like tables and everything. But it's just like, there was almost no internet most of the time. And the problem is that uh, buses are much slower. You know, when you go on a train, it's just two hour journey. So yes, it's a train hackathon, but you only spend like 10, 20% of the time on the train. Most, most of the time is in the National Museum or in the other venues, co-working spaces. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.